All right, tomorrow we're going to start talking about angles and arcs formed by chords, secants, and or tangents. The first thing we're going to look at is angles formed by two chords. All right, and our theorem tells us that the angle formed by two chords inside a circle is equal to half of the sum of the intercepted arcs. Now remember, chords go inside the circle. Their endpoints are on the circle but they don't necessarily have to go through the center. So the theorem says we're going to add the arcs and we're going to take half of it. I generally like to write it, the angle equals the sum of the arcs. I show that by adding, divided by two, because that's what half means. So let's look at some examples. Our first example, we want to find the measure of angle one, so let's put an X there. All right, I notice that their angle one is formed by two chords. The endpoints are on the circle. So I'm going to use my formula. The angles equal to the sum of the arcs. One arc is 116, and the other arc is 140. And we want to take half of the sum. So to me, it's easier if we make it a proportion to solve it. So I'm going to put it over 1. That gives me 2x equals 116 plus 140 is 256. So to solve for x, I want to use the division property of equality, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So that tells me that x, which represents angle 1, is 128 degrees. And if I look at my picture to make sure it makes sense using my standards of mathematical practice, that is an obtuse angle, so that answer is reasonable. Second example, again notice I want to find the measure of angle 1, but angle 1 does not correspond to the two arcs given. So let's find the measure of the angle that corresponds to those two arcs. Again, it's formed by two chords. So I want to use my theorem that says the angle, which is represented by x, is equal to the sum of the arcs, which is 62 is one arc, and 44 is the other arc. And I want to take half of the sum. So again, to work it out, I want to set it up as a proportion. So when I cross multiply, that gives me 2x equals 62 plus uh, 44 is 106. So to, so to solve for x, I want to use the division property of equality. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2, so the 2 eliminates on the left. So that tells me x equals 53 degrees. Now, x is this acute angle right here, and that's not the angle that I'm looking for. I want to know the obtuse angle. So the relationship between the acute angle and the obtuse angle is they form a line. They're linear. So to find angle 1, I need to take 180 degrees, which is what a line makes, and subtract 53. So if I track, subtract 180 minus 53, that's going to give me 127 degrees. And if I look at my picture and make sure my answer is reasonable, that is an obtuse angle, so that is a reasonable answer. Next example. This time, x is representing an arc. The arcs are formed by chords because their endpoints are on the circle. It's not a central angle, so I want to use my formula. Now, the problem is, is I don't know the angle that corresponds to these two arcs, so I need to use the fact that the obtuse angle and the acute angle are supplementary. So I'm going to say 180, subtract 137, and that's going to give me 43 degrees. So I know that this angle here is going to equal 43 degrees. So I use my theorem that says the angle, which is 43 degrees, equals the sum of the arcs, which is 25 for one arc and x for the other arc, and I need to half that sum. So if I want to solve it, I'm going to use proportions, so I set it up as two equal fractions. I cross multiply, 86 equals 25 plus x. And to solve for x, I need to use the subtraction property of equality, so I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. So I can eliminate that 25 on the right side. So that's going to give me x equals 61 degrees. And that is a small part of my circle. It is a small arc, some minor arc, so that looks like it would be appropriate. All right, the next theorem we want to talk about is a theorem formed by two secants, two tangents, or by a secant and a tangent. It says the angle is equal to half of the difference of the intercepted arcs. 
So that's telling tell me that instead of adding my arcs, I'm going to subtract them, but I'm still taking half. Again, I like to write it like a proportion, so I would say the angle equals the arc, subtract the arc, and I want to take half of it. Remember when you subtract to get positive answers, you always want to start with the larger value. So let's look at an example. Here's our first example. I want to find the measure of angle 1, so I'm going to put an X there. I know angle 1 is formed by a secant. This one goes through the circle and a tangent. That only touches it at one point. So I've got to use my theorem that says the angle, which is represented by X, is the difference of the two arcs. The larger one is 138, and I want to subtract the smaller one, so I'll have a positive value, and after I subtract, i got to take half of it because this theorem says half the difference. So to solve it, I want to set up a proportion. So I'm going to say 2x equals 138 subtract 66 is 72. So to solve for x, I'm going to use the division property of equality. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I know that the value of x is 36 degrees. And if I use my standards of mathematical practice and make sure this is a reasonable answer, that is an acute angle, so it looks reasonable. Next example. Again, I want to find angle 1. Angle 1 is formed by a tangent and another tangent. So I know I want to use <laughs> the theorem that says half the difference of the arcs. The problem is, is that I don't know the value of the smaller arc. I do know the larger arc's 300. So to find the smaller arc, a whole circle is 360 degrees. So I'm going to subtract 300 to find the rest of the circle. So that would give me my smaller arc is 60. So now I can use my theorem that says the angle, which is represented by x, is equal to the difference of the arc. So let's start with the larger arc. Subtract the smaller arc, and the theorem says take half of the difference. So in order to solve it, I want to make it a proportion, so I'm going to put it over 1. That gives me 2x equals 300 subtract 60 is 240. So to solve for x, I want to use the division property of equality to eliminate the 2 on the left. So that would tell me that x equals 120 degrees. And if I use my standards of mathematical practice, I'm a little worried about that answer, but I do know that I used the correct th formula, and so that answer has to be correct. The picture just must not be to scale. Last example. On this one, again, I've got, I've got an angle that's 38 degrees. It's formed by a secant and a tangent. A secant touches the circle twice, and a tangent circles it what touches it once. So the theorem says that the angles equal to, and I know my angle is represented by 38 degrees, half of the difference. So let's start with the larger angle arc, which is 180. Subtract the smaller arc, and I need to take half of that difference. So to solve it, let's turn it into a proportion. So that's going to give me 76 equals 180 subtract x. So to solve for x, I need to use the subtraction property of equality, so I'm going to subtract 180 from both sides, so I can eliminate it on the right. That's going to give me negative 104 equals negative x. And to solve for x, I need to use the division property of equality. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1 to eliminate the negative sign. So that's going to give me positive 104 equals x, and that's going to be the value of this arc. And it is a minor arc. It's less than 180. So that is a reasonable answer. We'll work on these some more tomorrow.